we can't see what's happening, know what they're doing, and then put our heads in the sand and say, well, it won't be my kid. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back with my friend, Martha Krejci, and we, um, we talked on Monday. If you missed Monday's episode, go back and listen. Um, she has an incredible testimony of just uh, growing up in a Christian home and then moving into a world that was that was not pleasing to the Lord. And then the Lord just grabbing hold of her heart and her husband's heart eventually and where the Lord has them now. And so it's so exciting just to hear the work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit and what He can do and to have hope in that. Sometimes it's hard to uh, hold on to that because there are people, uh, every one of us, I'm I'm confident that every single person listening to this episode has someone in their life, whether it's a family member or a friend who you're just like, but just find Jesus, like just hold on to Jesus. Like he, Jesus is the only way. He is the only hope that we have in this life. And you just so desperately want to change them. You want them to see that Jesus is the only way. And so it's it's hard to walk that line oftentimes. Uh, but Martha um, is just a great example of how uh, the Lord can use people praying. Um, you know, as her, she talked about her sister praying for her and how she prayed for her husband, Mike, and God can use that um, to change lives. So yeah, go back and listen to that if you missed it. We're going to talk today about homeschooling and what that looks like in their family and how they got into homeschooling. But before we do, I want to say thank you again to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. They are um, a, a Christian curriculum, as you know, that will encourage a love of learning um, in your kids and they'll help your child develop a biblical worldview because everything that they do is based on a biblical worldview. And so they are just amazing. Um, if you're looking for any subject, any grade, uh, check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. And you can talk with one of their consultants and they will help you as well to figure out what is best for your family. So I know at this time of year, so many of you are looking into next year and trying to figure out what is gonna be best for you. Maybe some things are working this year and some things are not. And so this is the beauty of homeschooling. You do what works best for your family. So check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, thank you again so much for those of you who continue to support the podcast. We are so grateful for you. Um, if, again, you've not watched the movie yet, you can watch that on, um, our, on our website. You can stream it for free, schoolhouserocked.com. Also, we have a sister podcast. So if you guys don't know about that, I think most of you probably do, but it's called Homeschool Insights. And we publish that one five days a week and it's short. It's like seven to 10 minutes each episode of just a blast of encouragement. And so if you've not listened to that podcast as well, uh, you can find it on any podcast app or on YouTube. And so if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to uh, both this channel and that one and um, subscribe to them on whatever podcast app you're listening to as well. Martha, welcome back uh, to the podcast. I want to talk uh, really quickly because this is such a cool story about how we met, you and I, we've not yet met in person, but we've talked on the phone. We've done some video calls together and stuff. And it's it's been so neat just to get to know you. And the way that I, I, I don't, maybe we found you, I'm not exactly sure you found us, but you watched the movie. So it was yeah. before, it was in the summertime, I think, um, yeah. that yeah. you watched it last summer. And the movie had a great impact on you, the movie being Schoolhouse Rocked. Um, yeah. And it really changed your thinking about home education and discipleship. So I would love for you to kind of tell that story of, of how the Lord used the movie. And, and I'm not asking this like, you know, let's do a big promo ad for Schoolhouse Rocked. I just want to know, like, what was the Lord doing in your heart before that? How did he change your heart through the movie? And then how did you get to where you are now as a homeschool mom? Tell us your homeschool story. I want to hear this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. First of all, if you guys have not watched their documentary, you must like you must don't, don't save it for another day. Just watch it tonight. What we did is we actually put it up on the, um, the TV in our living room and we all watched it. Me, mm -hmm. Mike and Nora, we all watched it. And, uh, and it was, uh, we were already thinking about homeschooling, except I was, I was in the stage because I think there are various stages of thinking about homeschooling. Sure. And uh, I was in the stage of thinking about it and then pretty quickly hyperventilating. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, 
I mean, we run a business from home, you know, like a, right. a decent sized business from home. And so I'm like, can we do this all right? Is this a, is this a thing we can actually do? I want to do it. Can I do it? And, and so that was kind of like a fear of mine, except whenever we watched the video, there were two things that I think pushed me over the edge. So this, your, your documentary pushed me off the fence, so to speak. <laughs> um, in the best way, in the best yeah, way. You're welcome. Um, one, yeah, thank you. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons that it pushed me off the fence was um, the reminder that uh, I'm not supposed to be a teacher and that we don't recreate like school at home. Mm -hmm. And that's not the concept. The idea isn't to do what they're doing there at home. It's right. to be able to like recreate and do what we're, you know, do but whatever works for our kid best, right? At right. home. And uh, that gave me freedom. So that, that was, that allowed me to not hyperventilate because I felt like structure, 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 <sighs> can I do that? And then also everything else. And it was just, it felt like a lot, but I think that the world makes you believe or want, they want you to think it's going to be a lot because, sure. and that's the narrative, right? That it's, oh, this is going to be such a big deal. Um, because they don't want you to do it, you know? Right, um, right. and so if, if they don't want you to do something, they're going to make you feel like you can't do that thing. And, um, and so I'm by no means a teacher and, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, I, I, I provide exactly what my kid needs. I'm a parent. Um, yeah. I don't need to be a teacher. I'm a parent and uh, I've been parenting her as long as she's been alive. So right. <laughs> why would I stop being able to do that now? Right. In the best yeah. way. I know my kid better than anybody else is going to know my kid. Right. Um, and so there is that. I think the thing that was more extreme was being reminded of, of all of the, um, I guess, ideology, ideology, mm -hmm. um, that comes from schools and how they're really drawing people away from the faith. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the whole idea is that the teachers are the boss, the teachers are the authorities. And if the teachers are saying X, Y, and Z, that will become truth for your kid, mm -hmm. whether you want it to or not, you know, right. that's going to, we have to, um, we can't see what's happening know what they're doing and then put our heads in the sand and say, well, it won't be my kid because that's probably every parent's story that sure. then it was their kid. Right. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I have to deal with this. You know, my kid thinking they're a cat or whatever, you know, like <laughs> it's just like this weird, it's this weird world that our, our kids are not, they don't have the foundation, they don't have the ability to really even have that much logic yet mm -hmm. before these schools are starting to just implement fundamental things that are truth to them, that there's no way that our kid can discern the difference because they're not old enough to discern the difference first. Right. But second, they don't have the logical capability until they're like 12. So what's happening up until they're 12 is the school and the world are creating this, this foundation of wacky world that our kids believe more than the foundation that they're getting from us simply right. by um, the fact that they're not seeing it as much from us as they are from the school. Right. And that's so whenever I saw that, and this was kind of like a rabbit hole into that, but yeah. whenever I saw that and was reminded of that, I was like, oh, heck no. Like this, <laughs> this is, um, this is, this is just a hard pass. I, we, we're going to do this. We are doing this. And that's where Mike and I started having the, you know, the difficult conversations right. of how are we going to do this? Because I was scared to death. Mike was scared to death. Yeah. And both of us were like, I can't do this. And, you know, then the other one says, well, I can't do this. And I'm like, together, somehow we got to do this because yeah. we have to sacrifice what we have to sacrifice to make sure she's okay. She's our kid. God yeah. gave her to us. Like we right. are supposed to be the steward of her. Right? right. And so we can't know what's going on out there and say, okay, well, hopefully it doesn't affect her. Hopefully she's smart enough. It doesn't have to do with smarts. They have a heavy agenda. 
right and their children and so that's it's not hard to put this agenda on children and so yeah. like it's just we we just have to we have to suck it up right and so that's yeah that's it we want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We have to sacrifice what we have to sacrifice to make sure she's okay. She's our kid. God yeah. gave her to us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, you know, you talk about sacrifice and it's so funny. Cause I used to always think that too, like, oh, you know, it is a sacrifice to homeschool and our good friend, Rick Green, he talks about how his mom used to say, cause he was homeschooled growing up. She homeschooled all of her kids. And when people would say to her, you know, wow, what a sacrifice you're making. She would say, it's not a sacrifice. It's, it's an investment. Yeah. And it's so true. We're investing in the lives and in the hearts and the minds of our children and, you know, I, I love that part in the movie you're talking in, in large part in what Sam Sorbo and Heidi St. John talked about in that, you know, when you're putting them in a classroom, you're saying, go trust this teacher. If this teacher says two plus two equals four, of course you expect your child to believe them. But then when they say that we were evolved from apes, well, okay, child, don't believe that. So then our kids are confused. They don't know what's true, what's not true. But as the parent, when you hand your child off to that school, whether public or private, you know, unfortunately there are a yeah. lot of private schools who are teaching the same things. Uh, we're, we're telling our kids, this is what's true. Believe what your teacher says, because it's going to be on a test and you're going to have to pass that test in order to get a good grade on your report card. And, you know, and there are a lot of teachers who they, they have a heart for children. They have a heart for the Lord, but they have to teach what they have to teach. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, there, there are, a lot of disadvantages, of course, to having our kids in school. Um, you know, there can be disadvantages to homeschooling as well. Um, there's pros and cons, I think, to everything. But I think by far the pros outweigh, you know, homeschooling just outweighs, um, you know, far beyond what, what our kids are getting in public school. How has it been for you since you started homeschooling? So you jumped in. I mean, it was so funny. I, I, I can't remember when we first talked, but I was like, there's a homeschool conference coming up. It was the one in, um, in Florida, in Orlando, yeah. the FPEA conference. And I said, it, and it was like that weekend. I said, if you're free this weekend, go to this conference. And you did <laughs> You were like, yeah, literally <laughs> you jumped in with both feet. And, um, and so how have you seen that transition in your family of going from, I'm not sure that we are going to homeschool and now we're going to homeschool, but I'm not sure how to actually yeah. homeschooling and now we're more than halfway through the year, you know, nearing the end of the year. Yeah. What has it looked like for your family? What impact have you seen that it ha has had on your family and on Nora? Yeah. Um, my eyes are watering up already because it's that much of like of an impact. Um, wow. uh, it's, it's been everything. So when I, when I first, you know, put my flag in the ground and I'm going to homeschool and I sort of make this announcement really for accountability. And so I can't back down. <laughs> right? yeah. That's why I did it. But, um, whenever I did that, I had so many parents comment on that post and say, uh, this is going to, this is the best decision you've ever made in your life. And, mm. uh, and you know, when we started homeschool, like they would say, when we started homeschooling, it, we wished we had started earlier, you know, like we mm -hmm. just always wish we would have started before. And when I saw all of that, I was like, okay, we're doing, we're doing the right thing. We're moving the right direction here. And, um, whenever we started, we just found a curriculum that worked really well for us and our family and our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been excellent. It's been fantastic. So I handle, uh, what we do is, you know, a subject a day, um, mm -hmm. and like sort of the full week, I guess, of a subject of day. And, um, and, and I take, uh, well, here, here's, we've, we've evolved a couple times, uh, in this <laughs> capacity. So, yeah. um, I take Bible. So I, I, I'm Bible on Monday on Tuesday and Thursday. What we did is neither Mike and I, we don't math. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and with this like weird math, I, I'm, I definitely don't math that way. Right. I don't right, math right. the normal way. And right. so I, this other, these other ways I'm like, I, you know, I have no right. Idea. It doesn't make any um, sense. 
<laughs> yes. I don't even prove your word. I don't know. What answer did you get? But anyway, so, um, <laughs> but so what we did is we found a local, uh, a girl that just graduated college with an elementary degree and she comes over and tutors Nora in math. Oh, and, I love that. Um, and then she does language arts too. So she does Tuesday, Thursday, math and language arts, which mm -hmm. were both difficult for us to, to kind of, you yeah. know, get in with. That was just our own thing. Um, yeah. and then Mike does, uh, science and history and geography. And so Nora has mm. got sort of this community yeah. <laughs> um, thing going on, but yeah, she just, she, she comes in here. That's her, that's her work area, right? Um, yeah. she comes in here and, uh, she does her school stuff in the morning. She just kind of does it on her own. And then we come in and we, we come alongside her to help her out and stuff, but it doesn't take as long as a full school day takes, which was right. the first thing that I realized where I was like, what are they oh. doing all day? Right. Oh, right? Yeah. Babysitting. That's what they're it's, doing. Yeah. It's glorified daycare. Right. And yeah. so what we've discovered in the year, and I think what brought the tears to my eyes anyway, what we've discovered so pa so far in the year is I have a better relationship with my kid. Yeah. I know who my kid is. You know, yeah. I don't just see see her after school and hear her talk about stories from school and these kids that I don't really know and, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, but I actually like it's her and I. So mm -hmm. her and I, and Mike, of course, but her and I in the morning, like, as I'm drinking my coffee, getting ready, we watch, um, we watch old, <laughs> old episodes of one of those old game shows that's on one of those channels. Uh -huh. Um, and so we watch that in the morning and I drink my coffee and her and I just sit on the couch and kind of start our day together. And it's just, um, I get to raise my kid, you know, yeah. like, and I get to be with her and she gets to know who I am yeah. and I get to know who she is at her core. Right. And I get to be able to, when she's like going through different friend drama or whatever, it can be me and her instead of her entrenched yeah. in the drama for eight hours and right. then coming home and trying to dispel it, you know, right. instead it's like, mom, here's what's going on. And then we just kind of talk it out and talk about what Jesus would do in that moment. And we really get to like, it's, I get to parent my kid. Yeah. And, um, I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. It's been, it's been an amazing, an amazing year. We've been loving it. Yeah. Yeah. And the relationship that she's getting to have with her dad, yes. you know, and it's so cool as, as he is a new Christian yeah. that they're learning together because they're both young Christians Yes. You know, so they're learning together about the Lord and what does that look like to serve him and, and, you know, to grow in their knowledge of his word. And I mean, what an incredible opportunity for them to do that together. I mean, it's just so cool. And I know even you, you travel together sometimes as a family, yep. I've seen you post things about, you know, okay, we're packing our bags. She's got her school stuff and we're on our way. And, and how cool that's one of the greatest things that that the Lord has allowed our family to do is that we've traveled together, of course, a ton. And so our girls have been with us. They've gotten to experience, you know, big conventions. They've gotten to experience small conferences. We've seen all sorts of places around this country. And, and it's just so cool because that is also part of building the relationship. It's not just building it at home, but you're building memories together with work, with church, with homeschooling, with just life. And, and, and you talk about you're getting to be a parent and that's really what homeschooling is, right? Yeah. It's yeah. parenting our kids. Yeah. It's not just about the academics. Those are important, but it's parenting our kids. It's developing their character because no one else is going to do that for right. them. No one. It's, it's not possible for any teacher, no matter how much they love your kid, they're not going to love your kid like you do. And, um, and so it, it is such a beautiful, beautiful, um, experience that we get. And it's hard sometimes, you know, I'm sure that you guys have hard days, you know, everybody yeah. does. I mean, I mean, every thing, let me ask you one last question about homeschooling. Um, before we sign off on this episode, you, you're homeschooling one, what, and, and I know you can't really compare this to, you know, well, versus homeschooling 10, here's what it's been, Oof. but what has been your home, your experience with homeschooling one child? Because of course, one of the concerns that people have is, oh, they're not going to be socialized. And with having oh. a single child, what has that looked like in your home? Um, and, and how is she developing socially? Yeah. Um, if you met my kid, she's cool. 
she's she's good she's good socially but we also you know we go to to church stuff she's got her church friends um she's in gymnastics uh she's uh we go to a a, a local place that's kind of like uh, American Ninja Warrior for kids, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and there, so there's there's places for her to socialize all over. Yeah. And then, of course, we have, you know, like co-ops that we can pop in and out of. And she's fine socially. Yeah. She has no problem. And actually, she will be the first to, um, whenever she goes into any group or when she, when, I love her heart. There was a new kid that came to the American Ninja Warrior sort of place. Um and uh, there was a new girl that came, and as soon as she showed up, Nora looked over at her and she said, "Do you want to be friends?" Oh. And it was just, she's just the sweetest kid. Yeah. But she, there's, yeah, there's no, <laughs> she's got no social problems. At, yeah. At all. Yeah. 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 Just find, I find other things to do. Yeah, I find it to be that a lot of times kids who go to school who are sitting in a classroom all day, sitting still at their desk you know, quiet, not able to talk to their neighbors. Right. They're the ones who are more socially awkward. I mean, there's weird homeschoolers, but there's really weird public <laughs> schoolers and private schoolers too, you know, like yeah. kids are kids are kids and they don't need to be in the presence of other children for 40 hours a week in order to be socialized. And, and with homeschooling, we get to kind of hone in on like, what kind of socialization do we want them to have? And we get to oversee the people that they are spending their time with. And yeah. so, yeah, it, it is such a great, great privilege. Um, okay. Thank you for sharing that story. We are out of time. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about working from home. And Martha is the master of <laughs> working from home. Um, again, she's the author of The Home-Based Revolution. So we're going to talk a little bit about this tomorrow. And she's got tons and tons of resources, um, lots of free resources to help you as parents. Um, you know, if you're one who is just like, you know what, one of the reasons I can't homeschool is because I need to work to bring an income, or perhaps you're someone who's just your home and you're, you're sacrificing, you're making that investment in your kids, but you really do need to find a way to bring in some extra income for your family. So we're going to talk um, and walk through that tomorrow. Uh, Martha, share with our audience one more time where they can find out more about you. Yeah. So I'm all over the socials, but uh, you can find me like a good hub is withmartha.com. So withmartha.com. And we'll put all the links, of course, in the show notes to make it easy for you guys to find her. Stay tuned to the very end here, what's coming up next on the podcast. And again, you can find all things Schoolhouse Rocked at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Thank you so much for listening and watching today. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. Today, we're going to be talking about why we decided to homeschool. And then I'm gonna review a documentary that I watched last night that was solid, solid. Okay, so uh, the question is, why did we decide to homeschool? So it's no um, surprise that we took Nora out of school starting next year. So she is finishing her last week of school um, in, you know, the normal, she's in private school, but she's, t she's in her last week of it right now in the last Tuesday, <laughs> she's going to be done on Friday, but we decided to start homeschooling next year. And for us, it was a really, really big decision. It was something that we have wanted to do for a really long time. But if we're very honest and totally transparent, which is my goal is to be totally transparent here because I want for everybody else thinking the same things to also be able to have information come up in front of them and think, okay, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. So some limitations that I was personally even thinking of and Mike and I together are that we're not teachers. <laughs> I didn't do great in school, right? Like I'm not like super smart lady, great in school. Like that's just not my, uh, it's not my thing. It, it wasn't my thing. And uh, while Mike is of course very smart, we just didn't fancy ourselves as teachers. And so there was a really big fear going into homeschooling as like, can we do it? You know, like, not can she do it, I'm sure she's gonna be great at whatever she does, she's awesome, but can we do it? And then whenever I watched this movie last night, it's called Schoolhouse Rocked. 
I have, it's free. I have, the link is in the description of this video because I really want for you to see it. And what I realized is that it's not a small decision to homeschool. And I knew that going into it. I mean, it's not, it's not just like, hey, do you want to send them to school or do you want to keep them home? Like easy peasy, what's the decision going to be? So it's a lot deeper than that. And it's a lot more life altering than that. Luke 6, 40. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. We are made to believe, which Mike and I are proof positive of because I just said it to you guys that we don't feel like teachers. We don't feel like we can do that, right? We are made to believe by society, by the machine, by whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, the broken world. We are made to believe that we are unable to teach our children. You guys, whenever it comes down to it, the things that are being taught in schools right now are not things that I'm okay with my, with being a teacher to my daughter. If we are putting our kids out into the broken world without this foundation of here's how you, here's how you learn, here's how you make decisions, here's how you know what the Bible says about things, here's what truth looks like, here's what it looks like to stand up to somebody who is saying something that you don't believe in, right? Here's how you do that in a graceful and effective way. Guys, there's, there's so many different things that we need to be able to teach our kids. So uh, when our kids become the teacher, then that's, then that's something we can be proud of. But I'm just not like, it just, it scares me to death <laughs> to see what's going on in the world. And it's like sending our kids like lambs to the slaughter. I am just beyond thrilled to have chosen to homeschool. Am I still scared to death? Sure. Because do I still have the fear of I'm not a good teacher? Yeah, that's, that's deep. That's deep in me. But am I going to let that get in the way of, of what I believe is best for Nora? No. I'm going to suck it up, sister. Right? I'm going to make it happen because I believe that this is what we're supposed to do. And I believe that we can't be like the world. I believe we are called to be different. We're called to look different. We're called to behave differently. And this is what that looks like. And so I want for you guys to watch it, to see it for what it is. I was coming into this I was like, okay, am I going to homeschool? Am I not going to homeschool? And it was kind of, it was a serious thing, but it was a little bit more flippant. But whenever I watched that, I was like, oh no, I need to. Like there's that, we had already made the decision to anyway, but still like, oh no, this is much more serious than I even thought. Much more, much more serious than I even thought. This is of utmost importance. I love you guys. Adios. Bye-bye. Uh, I was about to watch her do something that I was not there for and uh, I pushed play and it was just, it was, it was her taking her very first steps. And then she looks at her daddy, you know, that's holding the phone and she just like gives him the biggest smile. Like she's just so proud of herself. Yeah. And in the same moment, I see her and I'm so proud of her. I'm just like beaming, right? And then I look up at myself and it was reality hit me that I'm by myself. I'm here in a place that I can't leave and I am uh, watching her do something I should have been there for.